Welcome to Shardcast, the Brandon Sanderson podcast. I'm Eric. I'm Ian. I'm Alex. I'm Matt, a.k.a. Comatose on the forums, one of the staff. I'm Shannon, a.k.a. Greywatch, one of the moderators on the forums. Yeah, we have a little bit of a different crew this time. Uh, we want to put out uh, regular content for you guys, so well, we'll mix it up a bit. Uh, in the, today, we're talking about a very contentious issue. The Love Triangle in Stormlight with uh, Calden, Shalon, and Adolin. What could go wrong, right, guys? It's the best. Like half our audience not listening to us anymore. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. You know, just 50% dislikes on YouTube. Right? No matter what we say. No matter what we say. So just uh, remember, guys, uh, this we're, we're going to talk in depth about all aspects of the love triangle. Uh, it's going to be our opinions. So try not to crucify us. Uh... But I, I think we'll be able to get through uh, all sort of aspects. And so let's just be respectful and we'll, we'll back up all the things we're saying with quotes and stuff. And hopefully it should be sensible to you. So how about uh, we start by recapping what happened with Shalan, Adolin, and Kaladin over these last two books? Alex, what, what, how about you? Uh, Tell us about what happened there. All right. Um, I'm actually going to start before uh, Shalon shows up a little bit. We have uh, Kaladin and Adolin kind of get off on the wrong foot uh, yes. when, you know, Kaladin orders them around on the plateau. And then to- at the beginning of that book, we get all that bickering between the two of them. There is much uh, bickering. And- much bickering. It's very good. Um, Shalon and, a- and Kaladin also get off on the wrong foot with the, the infamous <laughs> boot scene in which she hey. pretends to be a horn eater oh. princess. Yes. Yep. Um, uh, but she and Adolin actually get off to a pretty good start as they're all, they're both a little Twitter pated over each other. Oh, and, uh, the- and they're and Kal- already betrothed. Yeah, they're already at, at betrothed. First, and they are betrothed. That's true. That's important. Was, yeah, was they, are, mm-hmm. they have a, a causal betrothal. Not a casual betrothal, as That's, some people were shocked yeah. to realize. It's causal. <laughs> yeah. This is yeah. like rogue and um, rouge. Very commonly misspelled. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Um, so, yeah, those two uh, start off with some awkward dates involving poop conversations. Um, which, which are Which are funny. They are fun. Yes. They're very funny. It's a good book. Um, Khaled and Shalon fall into the chasms, bicker and bicker and bicker, but Lots sort of, of bond bickering. a little bit as they find out their shared trauma, and Kaladin realizes that he killed her brother, which, you know, could throw a wrench in things. Yep. Um, Kaladin is pretty Twitter-pated. Kaladin's pretty <laughs> Twitter-pated with Shalon. Yeah, and he's one of the first people who Shalon... Um, Shalon... Shalon uh, <laughs> confesses to about her kind of whole story in one piece besides pattern. That's so. true. That is true. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they have that, that really important bonding moment. Um, but she and Adolin are staying the course on the engagement um, through the end of the book and into Oathbringer. Uh, at which point we have the kind of Adolin murder plot is going in the background. Shalon with the ghost bloods and Kaladin and all of the stuff that happens to him in part one with his traveling and such. Um, But we kind of first see all three of them uh, really interacting as a group when they all head to Kolinar together. Oh, Um, yeah. All three of them. Which we we start getting a lot of scenes of all of them. And we'll go into detail about that. I'm skimming the surface here. Yep. Um, But we see, you know, Vale is a little interested in Kaladin. Radiant really likes Adolin. And Shallan's trying to figure out who she is. Um. More bonding through Shadesmar. Shadesmar actually, I think, has some of the most important conversations for them. Um, and Kaladin and Shalon talk about their trauma again. Cal- uh, Adolin helps Kaladin with his trauma as they're walking. And uh, by the end of the book, we see that um, Shalon chooses Adolin and they get married by the end of the book. And Kaladin kind of accepts. I don't think I really loved her romantically. I, I loved her in a different way. She reminded me of Tien, sort of thing. And that's kind of the love triangle in a nutshell. Yeah, that that's that's what happened. Uh, so let's take uh, some quick 
hot takes of our initial thoughts. We're going to go in depth very soon. Uh, but Ian, why don't you start us off? What do you think? Yeah, so way, way back in the day, I was actually a, a fan of Shalorin, which is Shalon and Renarin, which <laughs> obviously did not happen. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, <laughs> very <laughs> surprised. <laughs> very surprised when it ended up her being in, um, engaged with Edelin, but I yeah. actually really liked how it worked all throughout Words of Radiance. I was never a fan of Shaladin, Shalon and Kaladin. And there were definitely some points in Oathbringer that I groaned out loud when Brandon started like teasing that. But ultimately, I, I like how it all turned out. Um, I think I, I was a lot of the same way. Um, I was pretty, pretty dead set on Shalon and Renarin going into Words of Radiance. <laughs> it's just, just uh, a little bit. You can, you can. It was just bad. You can it listen to. Bad. You can listen to all of the Splintercast reads Words of Radiance and Alex being horribly <laughs> shot down on SoundCloud. It it hurt. Um, <laughs> but I mean, I've been outspoken against Shalon and Kaladin for years. Like, I can see the appeal. I I understand why people like that ship, but I have a lot of issues with it. And I was hemming and hawing all through Oathbringer every time Kaladin and Shallan was teased or like Sil talked about it. I was like, ugh. And then at, at the end, I was like, you know what? Actually, I kind of, in hindsight, I liked those scenes a lot better because they were going toward this end. Yeah, I I had a similar experience to Alex, I think. Um, in Words of Radiance, I remember just as soon as Kaladin and Sh Shallan started having scenes together. I was just like, no, Brandon, no, you can't do this. Stop it. Stop it right now. Um, and, but then now when I go back and read those, and I was the same during Oathbringer, but now when I go back and read even Words of Radiance, I find myself enjoying the Kaladin Shallan dynamic a lot more, and I'm able to appreciate it. Um, I think now that I've gotten over my kind of initial very visceral reaction to not wanting them to be a romantic couple. Um, so I think I've learned to appreciate their relationship um, more for what it is, which is kind of cool. And I ended up liking the love triangle, even though I was dreading it. Um, for me, I did not enjoy any moment of it. Um, I, I hated it. I hated it in Words of Radiance. I hated it in Oathbringer. Um, hated who I, in I, particular? I hated the whole thing. I don't particularly like either um, Shallan with Kal Kaladin or Adolin. I was annoyed at the fact that Shallan and Kaladin had a thing. I was annoyed that Shallan and Adolin ended up. Shallan and Kaladin. So, um, I'm sorry, sorry. <laughs> Kaladin and and Shallan and Adolin. I was annoyed that they ended up together, and I'm in dread that it might continue. But after. I don't know, a few weeks, I've sort of gotten around to the idea, and now I kind of, okay, uh, like it turned out all right. So I'm, I'm excited to see how it happens in the future. Car Carrie gave me her thoughts, even though she's not here today. Mm -hmm. uh, Carrie said that she was kind of annoyed that a love triangle happened at all, even though it kind of had to, with the chemistry Shalon and Calden built in the chasm. But mm -hmm. uh, she loves that Shalon shot down the I'll let him have you trope. Yes. Uh, and called Adolin on it, which is a reference to the end of Oathbringer there. Uh, and Carrie says that she was firmly in the camp uh, Shadolin uh, since she saw them together in Words of Radiance and think that Calden and Shallan worked together uh, as platonic besties, snark buddies than they ever would have as romantic partners. Uh, so that that's Carrie. Uh, man, I... With with you guys though, man, you're you're so anti Shalon and Kaladin. I can just I can just feel yeah. the doubt. I can feel the dislikes already. Uh, but yeah, Sorry. I can just Sorry, feel guys. it. So I'll say for me, I never minded Kaladin and Shalon. I never minded it. Uh, it I thought it was very believable in the chasms. Mm -hmm. Uh, and but I I also enjoyed Shalon and Adolin. So at the end of Words of Radiance, I was like, man, I don't really know how this is gonna end up. I like I I kind of enjoy it. Uh, and it it feels realistic there. 
mm-hmm. but I'm I'm really pleased with the resolution. Uh, and I now think that Calvin isn't really ready for a real relationship. He he's got some more growing to do before he can actually be supportive to anyone, not just Shalon. Uh, and Shalon has lots of issues to yeah. need uh, some a person close to her to help her with. Let's say. And I also think it's important to maybe acknowledge, and we'll get more into this, that, you know, Shalon isn't necessarily ready for what she's getting into either. No, yeah. But that doesn't so. mean that overall her and Adolin's relationship will be bad, just but, because they're maybe getting a little ahead of themselves. But I, I think Adolin is better suited to helping mm-hmm. her rather than Kaladin. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I agree with that. Uh, I, I know now some people might disagree. Again, these are our opinions. Um, we're going to go into detail. Um, but how about we talk about just Brandon writing romance and tropes uh, in general with, with romance? Mm-hmm. Mm, very important. Who wants, yeah. anyone want to take the lead? Sure. Sure. Um, like, I think one thing that Shallon, Shallon and Adolin fall into is the uh, arranged marriages working out trope. Um, and we've had a number of these from Brandon. We've had uh, Serene and Raiden, where that was a political marriage, and they just ended up being peachy keen. We had uh, Steris and Wax. We had Siri and Susabron. Mm-hmm. Um, and now Shalon and Adolin. So not that it's bad to show that kind of relationships which start differently than they normally do in kind of Western society work out well. I think that's not a bad thing, but it's it would convenient. be nice to see some more variety. And it does feel a little convenient or forced at times, I think. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah. I liked all those relationships, but I can definitely yeah. see someone being like, all the arranged marriages really work out really well in Brandon books. And it's like, yeah, yeah. That, that's that's true. I but can I see wonder if... It, it, I wonder if that's just like our Western bias coming mm-hmm. through because like our culture, it's like very like focused on like, oh, you must find your own love. Whereas like other cultures, like arranged marriage is still very much a thing like that mm-hmm. just happens and it works out fine. And we have a very uh, individualistic view of romance, I think. You know, you have to find the partner that's perfect for you. And it's mm-hmm. very like, like that's kind of a stereotype too, but. But I mean, at the at the same time, like, do all arranged marriages work out okay? Like, I, I yeah. think that's a legit <laughs> criticism, though. Like, yes, even yeah. though we're pretty biased as you know, mm-hmm. Western readers in our modern society, I think at the same time, probably more ended up bad than is being depicted here. And that's why this is getting slightly off topic, so we won't get into it. But I would like to see more of what Gavilar and Navani's relationship is like. That would be cool. Yeah, definitely. Mm-hmm. Because that's... yeah. Although we don't know how arranged that was, I guess, but that might be an example of a less happy marriage, potentially. We didn't get that, like, at all in the Oathbringer flashbacks, yeah. really, because Dalnar, yeah, we had so really. much with Dalnar, and that was that was a surprise, but you're totally right there. But, like, mm-hmm. Evie and Dalinar were an arranged marriage, and, like, yes. they... Th- there are some problems with that relationship. That's true, yeah, we have a well. great example yeah. of yeah. an arranged marriage that's like, yeah... I, I would rate that ended up not well. <laughs> yeah. Not well. No, and no super that's... Great. Yeah. So I think there are counterexamples, definitely. I think where it becomes an issue maybe is just that so far the ma- main characters have all had, ex- with the exception of Dalinar, have had quite uh, positive things. Yeah. But Do you have an arranged an marriage issue? with another main character? You're going to be just fine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I also feel like we haven't really seen for sure that Shalon and Adolin are working out. Like, yes, that's um, a good point. We no. we didn't even see them get married. Like technically we saw them courting, but just just to set things straight, we actually haven't seen their marriage work out. Just just setting that out there. Yeah. yeah. Like, that's one that's thing I'm point. looking forward to for um Stormlight 4, which is after a year break. Mm-hmm. They're like so far. They're going to be out of the newlywed phase by then. I'm yeah. very interested to see what their dynamic is going to be like. I think that's something that's missing in fantasy sometimes is the depiction of like 
the married relationship that's just ongoing and that there's still exciting fantasy things happening. And so often marriage is saved for the end of a book as it was here, but it is still a 10 book series. It's just so we're going to see more we're, 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 of we're their good. marriage. Yeah. Not to not to bring up a, a dirty word on this podcast, but oh, if no. we take uh, Well of Ascension <laughs> into account. <laughs> um, uh, I, I think Brandon actually does like to explore, you know, Vin and Ellen don't get married until the end of Well of Ascension, but they kind of had their yay, we got together moment at the end of the first book. Yeah, definitely. And then Brandon explored, you know, hey, there's kind of issues that need to be worked out here in books to follow. And I think we're going to see some of that with Shalon and Aidlin too, that they had this, yay, we're happy, we're going to be together moment. And then we're going to have to also slog through all of those hard couple things that you have to do if you want to be like, successful in a like relationship. Like merit. Talk. Marriage is part of the journey, not the destination. Yeah, hey. Mm -hmm. Yes, hey. I like that. There's no scenario with an old married couple who has been married for like forever where they haven't had lots of hardship and they don't tell you, yeah, no, this was really hard to be married mm -hmm. to this person for a long time, but I love them anyway, right? There's no scenario mm -hmm. where they're like, ah, it was easy, easy peasy. We definitely didn't grow together. Like, they're not done at all with mm -hmm. uh, growing. It's just, it's the end of the book and we're not going to get Stormlight for a while. So people are thinking, oh, is that going to fix all the problems? No. No. Yeah. No. Um, so, and then the other thing I think with Brandon writing romance, and I think this is part of my reaction against Kaladin and Sh Shallan being together, is the trope of the, like, kind of two alpha main characters getting together the kind of official couple of the series mm -hmm. um which happens a lot when there's kind of a male lead and a female lead is that they become yeah. romantically involved of near the same um, age group so in the same age group yeah like obviously dalinar is his, in his own class just because he's twice everyone's age and he's the team dad <laughs> but yeah um i don't think there were a lot of dalinar shalon fans <laughs> Yeah. Don't. Oh, that's not a ship I've seen. No. <laughs> I think we've seen weirder. Yikes. I think we've seen weirder though. Right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. definitely. I, I will say kind of like extending off that official couple trip, because that was one of the things that I really didn't like about Shalon and Kaladin as um a potential. Mm -hmm. Was also just the way that it got set up in Words of Radiance felt a little bit falling into cliches. With, like, mm -hmm. the boots scene, oh, they hilariously got off on the wrong <laughs> foot with misunderstandings, and then they're forced yeah. to work together after they fall into danger, but it's okay, because even though they think they hate each other, they're actually going to bond and find out that they were meant to be. And then they both spend, <laughs> like, all of part five thinking about each other when they're not supposed to be, and I was like, oh my goodness, sand, Don't sand do my it. nails off. Don't this do it. So way less painful. <laughs> And the other thing I think, too, is it's playing into is Kaladin and Shallan fit more of the uh, will-they-won't-they they archetypes than uh, Adolin and Shallan do. Like, Adolin and Shallan fe mm -hmm. feel almost forced together. Like, their obstacles are their own personal things, but, like, they're kind of expected to end up together, where Kaladin and Shallan have all these, you know, Shallans with Adolin, and their light eyes and dark eyes, and... They don't, you know, there, there's more of those kind of typical couple obstacles that are very external going on. And I think that makes it interesting with Adolin and Shallan in that a lot of their obstacles to being a couple are internal. So, I, mm -hmm. going off what you said, Alex, uh, any, many things in books when you distill it down to its core sound very dumb. But <laughs> when you say it like that, it's like, oh yeah, that's 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 kind of true. Yeah, and um, like we we've already seen like Brandon like subvert that trope with um, Mistborn Era too, because like mm -hmm. after the first book, it's like, oh, yeah. Vax and Marasi are going to end up together, but like by book three, like he marries Steris, and Marasi mm -hmm. is just like, yep, nope, I've moved on, like. Yeah, I'm that fine. is an, a a really good podcast idea, which I'm yeah. writing down. <laughs> and uh, oh, there. So first podcast thought of for the 
for the yeah, recording. Yeah, yeah, it's 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 a meme. Like, oh, we should talk about that. Um, yeah. um, and actually, it's interesting because I also had a very negative reaction to Wax and Morassi when I was first reading Alloy of Law. Same. Very similar. Okay, all right, all right. Well, we'll save it for another <laughs> podcast, yeah. guys, because yes. I yes. have lots of opinions too. <laughs> yeah, I've written it down. It's it's penciled in. Okay. Um, but but for yeah. two years from now. <laughs> No, no. I think we'll next year we'll probably be like, you know, we should like talk about something that isn't about Oathbringer. Oathbringer <laughs> eventually, yeah. but there's still so much to talk about. But with with both Shalon and Adolin and Shalon and Calden, I think that was kind of uh Carrie's complaint. That's like, why did we have to do a love triangle? Cuz mm-hmm. both options have those downsides, right? Yeah. Like, someone's going to be upset with this situation, and as promised, they are. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so, Shaladin. Yeah. Oh, there's uh, one more thing. Oh, about... that's true. I skipped something. I'm sorry. Yeah. Ah. Oh, I think I wrote this down, so I'll, I'll start it and see if anyone has anything else to say. So, one thing that Brandon does here is all three characters have had past love interests and past relationships, so none of them are falling into the first love works out trope well um, i like was, there's was shalon and capsule really love yeah <laughs> I yeah don't know and about i that, think but... i think shalon is the closest yeah to the kind of first love trope but that's why i think it's the important that she is the angle of the love triangle because she is still exploring her options and so when she decides to be with adeline she has considered other options yeah um, lots, lots of, but people. definitely Adolin and Kaladin have gotten around. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about Kaladin. Like Kaladin had Terra. Kaladin's dated before. Yeah, he's Adolin dated before. Has, not. Yeah, I'm maybe. not calling. I'm not cal- calling Kaladin. Um, a player. Yeah, <laughs> Adolin on the other. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. I, I I think that the best way to sum up Adolin's romantic history is when May Aladar showed up in Oathbringer. I was like, I wonder how her courtship with Adolin went. Probably not good. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, or like well, when the... Janala just starts throwing things at him in Words yeah. of Radiance. Yeah. And I think that on that subject, I think that's one of the ways where it makes sense that the arranged marriage worked out for Adolin. Like that's when true. He starts it. He is kind of like, oh, maybe something with more structure where I have to put in the time and actually get to know someone before getting bored um, would be good for me. And... That's true. For Yeah. Mm-hmm. In, in that context, yes. For sure. Mm-hmm. Okay. So now, are, are, are we going to deep dive? Are we going to deep dive into Shaladin? Shalon do it. and Calvin. Let's do it. Do you want do you want to kick us off as the the person who is closest to a Shaladin fan? I t- <laughs> There yeah, are people like? who are a lot more uh gung ho about Shalon and Calvin than I am. Like like for me personally, I don't get like super invested in the love life of fictional characters, huh. honestly. Invested. Like I yeah, right. <laughs> wouldn't wouldn't okay. be a shard cast if we didn't get invested or not invested. Uh, but like you know, I, I'm generally more about the world building. But I I never minded Shalon and Kaladin. Uh, I will say, uh, my opinion with Words of Radiance was that uh, it made sense for Kaladin to like Shalon in that way. Mm-hmm. I mm-hmm. at least I with agree. with me and my relationship history which is quite like Adolin's. Uh, but uh, but I, I've gone through the, you know, liking someone, but not really knowing much about them type thing. And like falling for them when you don't really know who they are. And that in Calden with towards Shalon in Words of Radiance really uh, made sense for me in that way that you, he could very realistically have feelings for her uh and and be like really entranced by her but not really know about her real problems mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah and i think shalon's feelings for kaladin also make sense too like i think he represents something uh to I think she's exploring kind of sides of her persona with him and i think that's why it's interesting that veil vale as this kind of 
um, escapist figure ends up being attracted to Kaladin. Mm -hmm. um, someone from the forums, uh, I think their handle is insert anagram here, talked about how Vale was Shallon wanting to do something that's not socially acceptable and kind of explores those things that Shallon herself doesn't feel comfortable exploring. Whereas Radiant is like kind of the opposite. And I found sure. that, well, I'm not sure I buy that interpretation 100%. I found it an interesting lens to view um, Shallon's feelings towards Kaladin. Yeah. True. I never really got a lot of uh, Shallan's like of Kaladin on like a deep mm -hmm. level. That that really, yeah. I, I, I more understood it from the lens of Kaladin liking Shallan. Yeah. I, I didn't really think that Shallan had like a romantic chemistry with uh yeah Kaladin personally and i think that's important to kind of acknowledge that you know like a attraction or a shallow romantic connection can exist independently of a, a deeper connection that would lead to a romance as she like gets to know kaladin it's like she, like i i think it like built off of like his wit like Mm -hmm. He can like go toe to toe with her. That's like, true. In like, whereas like Adolin really can't. Adolin, Adolin is not is, like, her intellectual equal in that way. Well, I like I mean, how it it's put. Um, she puts it like Adolin is like mentally direct. Like yeah, whereas mm -hmm. which like he's not stupid. He's no. just not witty. Per se, right? Right. So I I he's... I understand that chemistry with uh. Calden and Shallan, but I that's kind of more of a thing for uh glorious uh like oh I hate you, I hate you, and then like they make out or something rather than like a real yeah. basis yeah. for a relationship. It, it's and like think... it, it, it it forces like um Shallan like oh like I have to one up Kaladin. It, it forces her to like um stretch herself, which like she like as someone who's always been like like she was enough. like kind of not a prisoner, but like she was very repressed growing up. Yes, getting a chance to like stretch those muscles, like it. I I can understand her like enjoying that. One thing about that too is also that Kaladin isn't impressed with her either, mm. yeah. which I can see why Shalon would be intrigued by that. Because mm -hmm. everyone oh, sure. she okay. talks yeah. to. Basically, everyone she talks to, she, like, is so used to talking in circles around, and then, like, because they're polite, they'll let her get away with it, be like, all right, right, lady? And then Kaladin doesn't do that, and she's like, oh, look at that. Cool. Yeah, and that's totally true with uh, Kaladin and Shalon, so that, that makes sense, but... The thing is, is that, that that's all kind of Words of Radiant stuff. I didn't really get a lot mm -hmm. of that from Oathbringer, like, at all. Either of those, like, like, like a bit in, in Oathbringer. But it was much stronger in Words of Radiance with the chasm scenes. As for, mm -hmm. actually, outside of the chasm scenes, um, I'm going to pull some quotes real quick since we, we pulled a bunch of quotes. For we have podcast. a lot of quotes. Many we do. I have um, one from Kaladin's perspective, which I actually think happens before they drop into the chasms it's like on the ride out there before the bridge collapses um kaladin sees shallan and adolin riding past and he says uh, she looked gorgeous kaladin was willing to admit it if only to himself brilliant red hair ready smile she said something clever kaladin could almost hear the words he waited hoping that she'd look toward him and meet his eyes across the short distance she didn't she rode on and kaladin felt like an utter fool a part of him wanted to hate Adolin for holding her attention, but he found that he couldn't. The truth was, he liked Adolin. Um, and I'll, I'll cut it off there. A, a little bit of like, Kaladin and Adolin, we're, we'll talk about them later, but they have a They're great awesome. relationship. They're wonderful. They're they so wonderful. good. Mm -hmm. um, and I've got another quick one, actually, after the chasms from Shallan's perspective, where she catches herself uh, thinking about Kaladin in a moment that she's not supposed to. She's actually in a conversation with Adolin at this point, um, she says a quip and uh, um, sh it says she waited for him to add a quip to hers, but he didn't. That was all right. She liked Adolin as he was. He was kind, noble, genuine. It didn't matter that he wasn't brilliant or, or whatever else Kaladin was. She couldn't <laughs> even define it. So there. 
And then at, <laughs> immediately it goes into this paragraph of like thought text as Shalon is apparently just so distracted, she thinks. Passionate, with an intense, smoldering resolve, a leashed anger that he used because he had dominated it, and a certain tempting <laughs> arrogance, not the haughty pride of a high lord, instead the secure, stable sense of determination that whispered that no matter who you were or what you did, you could not hurt him, could not change him. He was like the wind and rocks were. Shalon completely missed what Adolin said next. Uh, okay. So <laughs> those are great things. And I can understand the chemistry. Like, I think, mm -hmm. like, Kaladin mm -hmm. and Shalon's Vale persona could have a great casual relationship. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't... Let's, let's talk about the negatives with Shalon yeah. and mm -hmm. Kaladin. And you know what? We're not going to be able to stop Alex from talking, so you might as well just talk, Alex. <laughs> okay, yeah, go for it. We'll jump in. I'm trying to scroll back up to, to see. Um... Well, one of the thing for one of the things for me is uh, we talked about how some of the scenes setting up the cattle, uh, not the Catalan thing, um, the <laughs> words are hard. <laughs> Shalon and Kaladin um, scenes felt a little bit formulaic um, in terms mm -hmm. of like the boots scene or like their chasm scenes, but for me they also had this weird twinge of unhealthiness to them. Um, that's that's what uh, your your quote about Shalon thinking about Kaladin reminded me of because like that's not a healthy way to think about Kaladin, yeah, like and, and help mm. him, right? No, like they both like idealize each other and right. like totally miss like the flaw, very real flaw flaws they both have. Yeah, she sees his intensity as something that's very attractive, and that makes sense. But his intensity is what drives him to such deep and dark depression, right? He right. feels his emotions so completely that mm -hmm. he they overwhelm him. And then, of course, Kaladin doesn't see what Shallon's issues are. He sees her <laughs> smiling all the time as a good thing. Yeah, let's, even though... mm -hmm. let's uh, just uh, read read that, where Kaladin, yeah. Let, let, me, let me just read it. He saw it in her eyes, the anguish, the frustration the terrible nothing that clawed inside and sought to smother her. She knew it was there inside. She had been broken. Then she smiled. Oh, storms. She smiled anyway. It was the single most beautiful thing he'd ever seen. He'd seen in his entire life. Like, no. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> Incredibly problematic. <laughs> Very I dangerous. Mean, I, I can see why Kaladin would like that. That's that's my perspective. Mm -hmm. I can see why from Kaladin's point of view that like, wow, that that's amazing. But then you mm -hmm. read Oathbringer. And then you read Oathbringer and how totally messed up Shallan is now that she's actually confronting her past and just like going in a crazy direction. Kaladin can't help that, I think. Yeah, and they they do follow up on that um, moment in Oathbringer when they're on the Reacher ship. So good, um, yes. And so Shallon is explaining, he asks her how she does it, and she says, I cover them up. I have this uncanny ability to hide away anything I don't want to think about. It It's getting harder, but for, the mo for most things, I can just... She trailed off, staring straight ahead. There, gone. Wow. I know, she whispered. I'm crazy. No, no, Shallon. I wish I could be the same. Ugh. She looked at him, brow wrinkling. You're crazy. Um, How and then they, they kind of get be? more into their difference of opinion on that. But it kind of shows, again, that fundamental um, difference in understanding and their lack of understanding of each other's emotional states. Shallon knows that that's, like, not cool. Well, like, deep down mm -hmm. in that conversation just shows... Shalon's like, yeah, I'm, I'm crazy. I'm, I'm, I'm managing it, <laughs> kinda managing it, air quotes, mm -hmm. right? But Calden doesn't get it. And I think maybe this is part of why people like the ship is they do have kind of opposite issues. Shalon's ignoring her emotions, and Kaladin is being overpowered by his. So that makes sense that there's some attraction to what the other person is doing. I don't think that makes them a healthy match for each other though <laughs> yeah Shane, I, what that's do you a really yeah oh, no, so i was just about to agree that's a really good way of saying it right to the point go on Ellen. <laughs> um I, I i think part of my fear in words of radiance was 
that these scenes that A sort of filled a cliche role also had this sort of like darker hints of unhealthiness. Um, like the chasm scene for one, I, I was worried that Brandon, we were just supposed to read that as, oh, Kaladin really loves her. It's the most beautiful thing he's ever seen. And I was like, yikes, that's scary. I really don't think that's a good idea. Um, and the, the same thing with the boots scene. You know, it on the surface, it looks like it's this funny meet cute. Ha ha. You know, she's she took his boots. And but when you when you think about it, it's kind of this really terrible scene for Shallan in which she sort of abuses a dark eye she just met for no amusement reason. and because she needed a pair of boots and it's she had you know, footwear she just wanted boots yeah just and and insane. for kaladin you know that's that's what his life has been is light eyes treat dark eyes like playthings and he brings this up a little bit in in the chasms but shallan kind of talks circles around him and doesn't ever really fully apologize for it um she sort of does but she's also like yeah she, but no. your your issues are kind of you're just mean to everyone Kaladin so No she she doesn't she never says anything like I'm sorry or uh, an apology. She just says well maybe you're right maybe I am an insensitive rich woman but you're so mean Kaladin. Like that's not an apology. No. That's just no, like No that's the opposite of an apology. That's the opposite of an apology. She's yeah. just like well is it my fault that light eyes have treated you badly? No. Like, except that's... that one time. Except that one time. <laughs> like, Shalon, come on, that's not that's not what an apology looks like. And she never actually dealt with that issue at it, all. It, it doesn't feel like Shalon can really be honest with him in that mm -hmm. way. Like, there is that. It, it's the whole, I think the appeal is the, the opposites attract kind of thing. But mm -hmm. that has problems. Have you not had friends? Who they date someone who's opposite to them. Sometimes it goes really badly. Yeah. yeah. Like uh, most of the time, I think. I, may, maybe some work out. I don't know. But And I think it depends where the opposites are at, yeah. too. Like, I think maybe someone with Kaladin and someone with Shallan's personalities maybe could mesh if, like, circumstances were different and they were at different stages. As sure. they are now, like... And they're and well, just how they're perceiving each other is very um, problematic, I guess. Yeah, okay. but interesting. You know what I found like most, like most romance cliche was like it came up a couple times, mostly in Words of Radiance, less in Oathbringer. But like Shalon would talk about like how frightening Kal Kaladin's intensity mm. was. Yeah, Which that's true. is shorthand I see in other romance stories, and I did not like it any better here. It's like, no, you like, my thinking is you should never be afraid of a romantic partner. <laughs> um, that's just my bottom line. But yeah. I don't, I just don't know. I just don't like it. Casual well, hate sex versus actual relationship. <laughs> Very different well, things. I, I think that's why it's significant that it's like Shallon kind of divorces her like attraction or whatever it is to Kaladin onto Vale because Vale is this like very transgressive um, force. And so it makes sense that her attraction to that danger and that intensity is folded into Vale's kind of portfolio of things. Cause she also gets kind of Shallon's adventurous side. So mm -hmm. She, Could, but Veil vale got I, the whole ghost bloods plot. That's all danger all the time. <laughs> Literally all the time. <laughs> yeah, but I remember after Words of Radiance, a lot of people started comparing like this tri love triangle to the Gavilar Navani Dalinar love triangle. Mm. Because like Navani says something along the lines that like she was intimidated by Dalinar when they were young. That's so I think true. a lot of people of were like, oh, it's just like that's just going to like it oh like Dalinar and Navani are perfect for each other like they should have gotten together back then it's like huh. oh like Shallan and like Kaladin like that's the modern day version of that they should get together like yeah but no but they like shouldn't. with Kaladin and or sorry Kaladin and Navani what uh with <laughs> Dalinar and Navani Dalinar needed to be at a completely different place in his life to be with Navani oh yeah, like, absolutely well definitely like if, Knowing Navani, like, if Dalinar and Navani could have made it work at the time, Navani would have chosen Dalinar. Because Navani does what Navani wants, That's right? True. That's like, true. Exactly. She chose 
Gavilar for a reason, and it's because Dalinar was really scary. And once you read the Oathbringer flashbacks, you know what she was scared of. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Can, yeah. Can I talk about depression a moment with Calden? Mm-hmm. Can, can we? Yes. Ha- have any of you guys struggled with depression? Let's just. I do not. My sister does, so I've seen okay. it close up, but it's not something that I do. Okay. And anyone else? I don't think so. You would know. Mm-hmm. You would know. Yeah. Trust me. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, because I have. So I think mm-hmm. I think I can talk about Calden and depression and relationships yeah. because, uh, it's really easy. Uh, sorry. L- let me think of how I want to say this. Uh, <laughs> no, you must just say words until they make sense. I'm good at that. But <laughs> the thing is, is that when you are depressed, you are not a good partner for other people. This is yeah. really important. You're, you're kind of like unstable. Uh, mm-hmm. And in a relationship, if, if, if you want an actual relationship and not like a casual hate sex thing, uh, which I, I'm not opposed to people wanting that with those two, sure. Uh, by the way, Brandon, please don't have Shalon cheat on Adolin. That'd be great. Uh, yeah. Let's never have that happen. Uh, let's be done with this. But when you're depressed, relationships are not helpful. And I've had a relationship with a great person. Uh, she had issues. I had depression. And it completely failed. It was horrible. We're, we were not right for each other, even though we had, like, we liked a lot of things about each other. Uh, mm-hmm. And our two mental issues, though different, compounded and made everything awful. And I feel like that's how uh, Kaladin and Shalon would end up being. Uh, Kaladin would be like, wow, you, you really can like hide your emotions really well. And, and Shalon would like eventually realize well, that, that, I mean, that kind of is not helpful. Like Kaladin shouldn't mm-hmm. be like, wow, all these personas. Uh, I, we, let's, let's have a, uh, an, an orgy with me and all your personas. That's, that's like not good. And I feel oh, like. Well, I don't think Kaladin would. Anyway. No, no, but I I don't feel like he understands the personas, right? He doesn't understand that. Uh, and yeah, Shalon, like, they're just like weird things she does. It, it's it's not like, oh, this is a problem. Like she's actually like her personality is fracturing. It's just like, oh, she's role playing. Or Shalon's and, being weird again, you know? Yeah, Shalon doesn't, and Shalon doesn't understand Kaladin's depression at all. She doesn't no. understand that at all, and. That's an issue. Like, that will cause problems. That's not good. Uh, those two, like, when you have two things where two people with different, really extreme mental issues, they're not at the stage to be together. Which, yeah, that's, that's, that's what I wanted to say there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I think even if Sh- Shalon doesn't make Kaladin's depression worse, I think... Part of what's causing his depression is attractive to her, actually. So I right, think exactly. The issue is if he right. if mm-hmm. he did get over it, all of a sudden that underlying intensity right. isn't there as much, and 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 Shalon, she loses interest. And Shalon not dealing with her issues is what's attra- is what Kaladin is attracted to in in her. So like their f- flaws of not dealing with their problems are what's attractive uh, for each other. That cannot possibly end well. Yeah, I think uh, Shaladin would have been a really interesting relationship to read. Um, it, but that, it's one true. that I don't think would have ended up um, good for either of the characters. See, but Brandon's good at torturing characters as well. That's so. true. I, I can see like if it was a different book and they did get together, and it would be really interesting uh, to see how catastrophic it would be, because I think it would, eventually. Mm -hmm. But I I can understand why people wouldn't like that anyway, but I think in more books we need to see breakups uh, in fantasy books, Mm -hmm. rather than like, hey, everything's working Mm -hmm. out, right? 
Yeah. yeah. But uh, I think uh, Carrie's comment is like, you know, Shalon and Calvin, they're better off as, you know, snark buddies and they're, they're not they're not able to support each other on a deep emotional level. Mm-hmm. And I think like it's great to see ma- male female friendships and it it's yes. too bad that this one started as a love triangle. But I think going forward, now that the triangle's been resolved, yes, hopefully. Um, it, we it, can it has see... to like that yeah. will that will be extremely bad and we will yell mm-hmm. at brandon if if that yes. happens if yes. this continues very loudly yeah it's much more interesting to deal with shalon and adolin's relationship when the end of the world is happening what's more interesting yeah. to read very pining true. pining about calden still a little bit no dealing with their marriage and shalon's growth as a character is a lot more interesting yeah from our perspective. Yeah, yeah, yeah that that that's and, my opinion. Like and I think one thing that it will be interesting is now that Shalon's given up Kaladin or this attraction to him is if that was serving as some sort of escape for her or kind of like the blue like I forget in the matrix there's the two pills but like the other <laughs> pill that would have put her on a different path. Um now that she's given that up is that going to create complications for her and Adolin are they and are they going to have to kind of sort through that as well we'll see definitely and like I think one thing we haven't brought up yet is that Shalon also reminded Kaladin of Tien oh that's right yeah like, Tien like he did help cheer Kaladin up when they were growing up like he was the light in Kaladin's life. And it's mm-hmm. like, yeah, in, during the chasm scenes, he's like, he thinks about, like, what it, must it be like having to be the light, being the light for other people? Like, what pressure does that put on you about Shalon? But, like, in then it, at the end of Oathbringer, um, let's see, there's a, a scene, and it's like, um, after, like, Shalon and Adolin, like, kind of, get together ultimately it's it's from kaladin's point of view he squinted down at shallan and aelin and found that he couldn't be bitter he didn't feel resignation either instead he felt agreement oh them sill said well i know you don't back down from fights you've lost a um you lost a round oh you lost a round but no he said her choice is made you can see it i can you should be able to. He rubbed his finger on the rock. I don't think I loved her, Sel. I felt something. A lightening of my burdens when I was near her. She reminds me of someone. Now, like, this is like Brandon being super subtle, because it's like Tien would like always bring him interesting rocks. rocks. Mm-hmm. So it's like, obviously, like, he's talking about Tien there, but like, yeah. Brandon doesn't actually come out and say it. Which, that... Mm-hmm. Like that's that's the and thing. I, it's easy to it's easy to fall for someone, but then realize it's like wait, that uh that I that wasn't right. And it's important to acknowledge that and I think that's what Kaladin's doing here, is Shalon is not Tien. Right. Right? Yeah. She reminds him of Tien. Um but she's not the person to do what Tien did for Kaladin. Well, it's also kind of a weird thing. Like, if you're in a relationship, like, why are we together, Kaladin? It's like, well, you remind me of my dead brother, who, like, that was yeah. kind of yeah. a big it's issue. Like, like, yeah, I, I, that's not super great. And and that's another good point, actually, is if they Tian and Kaladin weren't brothers, like, I think they have a good brother relationship. But if they weren't brothers, I don't think their personalities would be a good romantic relationship. Mm-hmm necessarily right sure if we imagine that tn is a completely different person and yeah yeah, right okay yeah it's like there's more than like one kind of love like not all love is Mm -hmm. romantic right so it's like yeah kaladin was like being reminded of his like brotherly love with yes tn Mm -hmm. and like he was like misinterpreting that as like 
love romantic love for Shalon. Well, and, and like, also yes. was probably like a guy who has not been with a girl for a long time and combined it with that and Shalon is actually pretty. So like there there's multiple things yeah. there. Yeah. Right? And it's pretty like, and exciting. Pretty and... exciting. Remind it lessens my burdens. So therefore I really like this person. Like I can understand mm-hmm. that. Yeah, smart. Uh but but yeah, like it's not really like that in mm-hmm. I, don't, I don't know i i am satisfied with the conclusion and i don't know who would be right for kaladin all things considered i don't yeah. know who that person mm-hmm. would be yeah like i i don't think we know that person yet like i i hope we find out more about tara yes we, we saw her for like one scene and it's yeah. like and what like little glimpse we saw of like their relationship ending like it's like Kaladin is like is in a better place now than he was then so it's like well, we could see like maybe ish. ish well i i i don't i don't know about that like with Kaladin that was before like he was a slave like that's kind of a important aspect of his character so yeah I, I feel like if we were going to give Kaladin a love interest that we had already met, I think my most interesting uh, possibility would be like Terra comes back as a Night Radiant of a different order or something, and those two mm-hmm. try to reconnect or something. Um, I don't know if I'd even like but that. I, really, I, I I'd also like to think know more about Terra. Like, good Tara character works we haven't met yet. Sidious. Mm-hmm. So it's like, ooh, that she Sidious and like. Oh, real quick, just a sec. I know we need to move on from this topic because we do. <laughs> it's long. We do. Um, but one thing that isn't even in the notes because I just thought of it. Uh, part one showed Kaladin interacting with a girl that he thought he loved, but realized he didn't. Um, with Laurel, going back to Hearthstone. Yes. Yeah, that's true. And that whole that's cool scene, foreshadowing. That I just I just kind of made that connection as we were thinking about Kaladin's past. I feel like that was kind of a good little microcosm of what he and Shalon did as well. That's true. I I really like that Laurel's just like shut him down super hard and Calden so was just good. like, okay. So good. Uh, like that was okay. good. Yeah. It was good to see from her and that perspective. Yeah. Because it's like she's been through a lot. Like yes. having to be mm-hmm. definitely married to Rashon. So mm-hmm. it's like he was probably like still idealizing like thinking of her like as the girl she was that he knew but like she's She's not that girl anymore she's grown yeah right exactly and i think that also shows an example of like kaladin's judgments of people can be very surface based like he's not always super perceptive no Um, yeah he's not he's not that speaks to me i'm not perceptive either so (laughs) yeah he like he runs into that with adolin initially he runs into that with shallan with laral um even with Dalinar. So I think that's something that he's going to keep continually he's, dealing with. Yeah, he he has very quick judgments about a person and rather than like understanding who they are. So that'll actually be really interesting when I, I hope he finds someone and he can actually like grow and understand other people. But I think he doesn't mm-hmm. understand himself well enough to understand someone else. Mhm. Yeah. Should we move on to the do, next? Do we do we have any thought last thoughts about uh Shalon Calvin? I don't think so. Covered it. Yeah. I feel pretty satisfied with this. Yeah. Yeah. I've covered a lot uh, of ground. If you're if the listeners aren't satisfied, they can leave a multi-page response. Yeah, in the I'm sure they will because they're like, <laughs> I'll tell you why they're meant to be together and it was terrible. How it happened. MLA like, format, yeah, go, Times New Roman, 12 point. Okay. <laughs> I prefer Chicago style, sources. actually, I, but. Uh... <laughs> you, you can't downvote things on the forum anymore, but just YouTube. Uh, anyway, let's talk about how things. The, the relationship Shalon chose. Shalon and Adolin. Mm-hmm. It's good. <laughs> yeah. We're pretty biased here, though, right? We, we are well... a, a kind of biased group. But, but I think we make we can make good points on both sides. And I think also to be fair, 
Brandon has set this up to be biased because this isn't the situation at the end of Words of Radiance when you were choosing between two possibilities. Right. Now we're talking about something that didn't happen and something that did happen. So I think it's yeah. there's going to be more people who followed along with Brandon and saw the clues and stuff he was putting in because he intended for Shallon and Adolin to end up at this point, at least together. Right. Indeed. That's a good point. I think a big part of that we kind of talked about getting ready for this with uh, Sh- Shallan and Adolin is Adolin's ability to kind of see Shallan mm-hmm. uh, um, yes. through her personas. Yes. Yes. Um, and it's interesting because from the beginning, um, in Back in Words of Radiance, when Shallan is getting ready for their date, she considers uh, making a persona or That's making true. at least an illusion and then she decides does. not to. And I was thinking about this because she does that later again, where she asks Adolin uh, who he wants her to be. Right. And way, way she has end. trouble believing that it's her. And I think like what we see Shalon do over and over again is anytime she's encountered with a new challenge or something she feels she can't handle, whether it's wielding a shard blade or infiltrating the ghost bloods she creates a new persona to do it for her and the romance with adeline is the one thing that she said she thinks about it and says should i and then says no i'm gonna be myself that is certainly true i i think in terms of um adeline being able to kind of see the the true shallan this is actually a character trait of adeline's that comes up several times but i don't think is ever really at the forefront adeline is an amazing judge of character um, yes. he's the one all through way of kings he's saying Sedeus is bad news he knows he I think this is why he gets along so well with Renarin is that he knows who Renarin really is when everyone else just kind of sees the yeah. the weirdness around Renarin that's the whole and, point of their relationship yep and uh, Adolin from the very beginning is like Kaladin has a huge secret and I'm gonna figure out what it is and he's dead on right Kaladin does have a huge secret and Aelin figures out what it is, and it's great. Um, and then they bro out because. And then they bro out. He's the happiest the person in the world. He's like, "Oh, this is a good secret. I was it's right." <laughs> he ha- he does he has at the end of Way of Kings and the end of Words of Radiance. He has a big giant. I was right. Yeah, <laughs> I think I, a... I knew Amaram was bad news. We, yeah, we probably exactly. Like, yeah, yeah, he, yeah, we're off. <laughs> everyone else is like, "Oh, Amaram, like he's our man." Like. <laughs> Um, it's awesome. He he would keep a cheer um, squad for himself. I, he would do that. Yeah. I, he but like Adolin, and like yeah, Adolin is like there's something like hinky, but like he, I don't think he like necessarily like trusts his like perception of other people. Mm-hmm. Like, like so like yeah, he's like he he can tell these things, but he doesn't always like trust it. Mm-hmm. Just like he doesn't always like trust like himself in relationships. Because like yeah. he always mm-hmm. fails, he, so like, yeah, yeah, he he definitely has um a lot of like intuition for this sort of thing, but not a lot of guile. I think um yeah one of, one of my favorite things is a scene we probably didn't put it in the quotes um but it's between Kaladin and Adolin, and I think it's as they're riding out on the bridge before they fall into the chasms. Um, Adolin's like, well, you know, you'd be okay, you know, because of the thing. Kaladin's like, what are you talking about? Adolin's like, yeah, you know, that thing. That you have. <laughs> Callum's like, are you fishing for a secret? Adolin's like, listen, I know something's up with you. I want to figure it out. And then like walks away. But it's the most obvious attempt to try to get Kaladin to admit something. And totally doesn't work. But he is right about Kaladin, so. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But and it, I think there's the theory that like he's going to reawaken Maya Lauren, his shard blade. The Maya only Lauren, way he can be a radiant, in my opinion. But. Yes. Meyer Lauren is a, yeah, is a podcast. cultivation spread. Um, yeah. Oh, and it's like, mm, yeah, that's Bond's right. edge dancers. Like, I will um, remember those who have been forgotten. Like, I will listen to those who have been ignored. Like, oh. that like does like play into his personality. Like, mm-hmm. he he pays attention to people. And I think also that listening point is so key because he's not just listening to people who are being ignored, but in Shalon's case, he's listening to someone who is actively trying not to be listened to you know like shallan is putting up these barriers 
Oh, that's that are... a great point. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, like, it takes someone who's a really good listener to um, hear that. Yeah. And I think that's something he gets from his mom, honestly, from what we saw that's, of her. That is true. Mm-hmm. Also very genuine, no guile, but uh, very perceptive. That is um, a very enough. accurate uh, thing of Evie, I would yeah. say. And it it makes sense since, you know, she was around him way more as a kid than yeah. um, Dalinar was. We do have, like, a word of Brandon that, like, a lot of, like, Adolin's, like, early morality and such like c- does come from his mother like she mm-hmm. was there like during the formative years like like her influence runs deep yeah can mm-hmm. can i talk about this this idea of uh adolin seeing the quote real shalom right sure yeah because mm-hmm. uh i think there there are people on the forums that are upset that that there is a core personality for Shalon and uh that Adolin being able to pick out that core personality has like removed her independence as a character and made her dependent on him which is in- an interesting perspective that I don't know if I agree. I Well, I don't agree with that, straight up. Well, I, I think one place the criticism might come from, if I'm understanding it correctly, is that people, I think it's more satisfying for Shalon to figure out her own problems. And I think what some people might be reacting against is the perception that, oh, Adolin is like the handsome prince who swoops in and saves the day sure, and saves right. Shalon from herself. Um, there's this one part in Words of Radiance where um, they've just gotten back from the chasms and Adolin says, um, well, I won't let that happen again. Nothing like it. I'll protect you, Shallan. Mm-hmm. She stiffened. I will make sure you aren't ever hurt, Adolin said fiercely. I should have realized that you would be caught up in an assassination attempt. Blah, blah, blah. And then he keeps going. And then she says, don't say things like that. She hissed. What? He ran his hand through his hair. Just don't, Shallan said, shivering. Um, and then she says, I will worry about what I wish to worry about. I don't need to be protected. I don't. I won't be locked away again, Adolin. Yeah, right. And so I think that concept of Adolin as the protector or the healer is what some people are reacting against when they don't like this relationship. Um, maybe also the idea that they're they're worried that oh marriage is the end game they're worried that like oh they're mm-hmm. married that's it's over but that that's not how relationships work kind of yeah kind of like teft swearing the oaths he thought it would just fix things and it didn't mm-hmm. these oaths mm-hmm. of marriage ah oh, see oh aha uh-huh. don't fix them don't mm-hmm. they don't fix those two right and I, yeah. I think it's important to acknowledge that for all intents and purposes, it does seem like Adolin listens here. Like when you next, like in Oathbringer, when you see them together, he's kind of acknowledging like Shallan, you're radiant, like you're, you're really um, tough and like you can fight and like you're amazing, you know? So I think there is a shift in how like Adolin does kind of shift away from that, at least that protector yeah. role. It's like he, um, he like, he he does like still like try to protect her, but like mm-hmm. by helping her protect herself, like he helps her like yeah. to learn the shard how to fight with her shard blade. You need to know how to uh, wield a shard blade. I know how to do that, so I'm going to help yeah. you with that. But, also, like, I love talking about swords. Yes, <laughs> yeah, um, but, he does. But like, I I don't think like Adolin is like capable of like fixing Shalon. It's like. Mm-hmm. Like, he, he can, like, tell, like, when, like, yes, like, she's not being herself right now. She's being one of her personas. Like, that, I think, is, he's, like, an anchor is the wrong word. Like, he's a steady rock that, like, um, Shalon does make progress in, like, dealing with, like, fragmenting her personas. Like, we, like the scene with um, Hoyd, like, where it's, like, mm-hmm. he's, like, 
you need to work on this and it's like you you have to be like the first like you're the queen like these personas like work for you like you do not work for them and it's like as like time goes on it's like she's like i'm good with the two personas i have veil and radiant like i don't need any more and it's like and adolin just like is a support for her like so like he helps facilitate her progress but like it's still up to shallan to make that progress if that makes sense i agree mm -hmm. it, that yeah and i i think it's significant that she did choose to show quote unquote her real self to adolin so it's not just that he's like yes he is able to see it but maybe part of that is because she intentionally tried to show him that at the beginning yeah even though she was also doing this like flirty persona that mm -hmm. was meant to capture his well interest. i i think he like he could tell like mm -hmm. something was up yeah like, something about her was different but like he didn't really understand what was going on but like her, him her opening up to him about it allowed him to open up about like yo i killed sidious like, yeah and that like yeah them being able to open up to each other was like a huge step there they are as well as shallan can be honest with him but they they're honest with each other and that's really important for an actual relationship i think that mm -hmm. Aelin's like yeah yeah i i did this thing and shallan was not like astonished like oh i hate you like in some disney movie or something right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which was great and like the honesty like that really cute poop scene about uh, <laughs> oh. uh you know the shard plate i think that's really encompasses it like they're really there's something really genuine about that interaction even though it's really silly yeah and a lot of the adel and shallan scenes come across as kind of silly or like comic relief but there's a lot of really genuine um affection and i think something really beautiful in those scenes real relationships are a bit silly guys and cheesy yeah. that's kind of how that goes a lot of times yeah that mm -hmm. um, reminds me of a tweet from brandon and it's like yeah. my wife just turned to me and grabbed my hand and she's like i'm glad we're not like freakishly aware like teenagers in a te in a dystopian novel yeah. which like that's hilarious like you you know that Brandon's yeah. wife is probably a silly person and a cheesy person, just like Brandon can be, because I remember annotations where it's like, well, you know, sometimes I'm cheesy and I like it. So there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's good. But I, I, I don't know. Like Shalon's personas are fake. Of course she has, she has herself. She's just losing that. And she mm -hmm. needs some help to get back to, being like not fragmented into a thousand pieces mm -hmm. and i will say mm -hmm. when you have mental issues you need someone who is not a broken person <laughs> like shallan's pretty yeah. broken and crazy and it's important to have someone who's not depressed or bipolar or having whatever shallan has right and adolin does mm -hmm. do that that he yeah. is steady and i mean you know he he has he has character flaws and stuff but he doesn't like have a deep emotional problem which is fine that's what shallan needs really mm -hmm. yeah. and i think unlike shallan and kaladin um shallan's brokenness does not prevent her from being a support for adolin right like there's still room for kind of mutual support in their relationship um, it's not just one way Adolin helping Shallan. I always found it interesting in Oathbringer that, uh, I mean, we get one scene in like part one, but most of what we see of Adolin is through Shallan because Shallan and Adolin are around together a lot until we get to part four. Then we get Adolin POVs where he's like, uh, yeah, I don't know what's going on. I, d I have no yeah. idea what this is. And Shallan can help Adolin get into this world with magic and stuff which he's not accustomed to mm -hmm. and like i i think like opening up to her about sidious like helped him like open up to his father 
which like I, I feel like he hadn't done that with Shalon, like I don't think he would have been capable to do capable of doing, which like mm-hmm. he would have become king and like been bad at it. So it was like it, like Shalon and Adolin's relationship gave us Queen Yasna, pretty much. Yeah. Yes. That's, that's true. He I he wouldn't have been a good king, I don't think. No. He wouldn't be ready for that. I don't think. No, like he's too like personally involved. Like he he does not have the detachment necessary. Nor the to, guile. Like, be... Nor the guile. Exactly. Mm-hmm. As... Uh I was gonna bring up the one of the forum quotes. It's is that okay that we have written down here? Let's do it. Try to um so this one's from um there was a very, 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 very long thread about this topic. I think I don't know if it quite hit forty pages, but it was about there. Uh um, well eventually. I don't think it was I'm like twenty five. But... Okay. Um which made some great points. And we've actually pulled a quote from forum member S L N C here, who actually brings in a quote um from Tin to Shalon. Um, and Tin says, uh, here's the thing. The lies we tell, the dreams we create, they're not real. We can't let them be real. This might be the hardest lesson you have to learn. Tin turned to Shalon, her expression having gone hard, all sense of relaxed playfulness gone. When a good con woman dies, it's usually because she starts believing her own lies. She finds something good and wants it to continue. She keeps going, thinking she can juggle it. One day more, she tells herself. One day more, and then... That's where the quote ends. But SLNC goes on to, to comment on this and says, Shalon is basically lying to herself and believes those lies by creating the stream of being happy with Adolin, while she actually needs to be a Night Radiant, a Light Weaver to be precise, which um, walk the path of attaining self-awareness. She's doing the opposite. She's denying being self-aware by pushing away any unwanted feeling toward these personas she's created and alienated from her core personality. She keeps her personas and thinks she can juggle it. Be the light weaver by being those personas sometimes and being the optimized Shalon who's ha- the happy wife to Adolin. But here's the thing. To be self-aware also, including, uh, also includes being aware of one's faults and failures, which is the quintessence of what Wit was trying to tell her. Shalon is all of it. Optimized Shalon, Veil, Radiant, her failures and her pain. And even with all of these perceived bad things, she's still a wonderful woman that deserves to exist, and that's not useless. So, well... I mean, isn't the logical path with Shalon is that, yeah, she brings Vale and Radiant back into her, eventually? Yeah, like I think the that's goal the. I think that bringer. is the path. Yeah. Um, there were some good comments which are not really about the, the the triangle, not really about the relationship, but just about the the disorder that Brandon might be basing this on. And just mm-hmm. sort of like that, that rather than treating them all as separate people, to all to treat them all as Shalon, no matter who's, no matter whether whether you can tell that it's Vale looking at you, but you still treat her like Shalon. Um, now this is so, for me, this is so far into the realm of like I don't know how to treat any sort of dissociative disorder. I don't think any of us do, but it's mm-hmm. th- it's like a whole other level that's sort of like we kind of don't know how. Either Adolin or Kaladin or really anyone, because Shalon, for one, hasn't hasn't really gone into telling anyone what the actual deal is with Vale and with Radiant. Adolin is is kind of like the first one that we that we see react to the re- to the reality that that Shalon has done this. Um, yeah, and it's sort of like, but we don't even we don't even really get to see it. It's kind of like the wedding. We don't know what's what's actually going to happen in the next stage. At- mm-hmm. Adolin has known about Vale for about, what, a day or something? <laughs> like, they, yeah. And, like, it's it's really hard to tell, like, how him and how he might actually interact with Shallan and her in her reintegration. Um, it's, it's just so hard to tell without more information, but... Ugh. Like um, th- there's go ahead. Th- th- there's a theory going around that like I really like that like Shalon's like fifth ideal like her last truth is like I am Shalon Devar mm-hmm. or like Shalon Colin as the case may be yeah I, I guess so yeah 
yeah. gotta change those articles <laughs> um, one thing in response like i i see the support for that idea that shallan is making a per- persona for adeline because there are moments where she kind of marks that she's the battered or broken vase and she's turning the pretty side towards adeline mm-hmm. you know or into the world um what's interesting though is in um when shallan is kind of going through her different personas she's talking about and she's thinking about marrying adeline she says i can be anyone shallan thought noticing a few joy spread blowing past like a swirl of blue leaves i can become anything adeline deserved someone far better than her could she become that someone craft for him the perfect bride a woman that looked and acted as befitted adeline colin it wouldn't be her The real her was bruised and sorry thing, painted up all pretty, but inside a horrid mess. She already put a face over that for him. Why not go a few steps further? Radiant. Radiant could be his perfect bride, and she did like him. The thought made Shallon feel cold inside. And what I think is interesting about this is, in the end, Radiant doesn't choose Adolin. And so I'm wondering if there's... if. Shallan thinks of Radiant as Adolin's perfect bride. Mm-hmm. Why doesn't Radiant choose Adolin? It's it's interesting, okay. I think. I think that's true. Um I think SLNC makes a good point about that tin mm-hmm. quote. Um mm-hmm. I think that's that's very important to Shallan's characterization and such, and especially true of her romantic relationships, but I think maybe the the issue I have with the implication is that, you know, the, the Shallan that we usually think of as Shallan, this this optimized version, is mm-hmm. not necessarily as fake as Shallan thinks it is. Um, yeah. It's, you know, she's... Vale and Radiant are very much really different personas. And even though Shallan talks about, oh, this isn't the real me. Oh, Shallan is, is as fake as Vale is. It's it's not necessarily true because the the persona mm-hmm. of Shalon is really just who Shalon wants to be if she wasn't broken. And so I think that's yeah. the self that she that you know Wit is helping her try to achieve. She needs to get to a point where that one feels true. She doesn't need to take that one down as fake. She needs to get to the point where she can acknowledge her trauma and still be the happy scholar artist who always has a funny quip sort of thing right. without denying who she is. Yeah. And like yeah. there's like the saying fake it till you make it that <laughs> I like I know Brandon is aware of cuz like he talked about it on writing excuses one time. Mm-hmm. But it's just like there's a difference between faking it until you make it and creating like false personas like living a lie. It's like yeah. Yeah. It's just like part of like faking it until you make it is like realizing like yes i've i haven't changed how i'm acting but like it's not a lie anymore like i'm there right it's just like shallan has to realize like she's not faking anymore like that is who she is mm-hmm. whether or not I like, think... that's where she started like that's where she if she isn't there now that's where she will end up mm-hmm. I, I really like how you put it alex that she's being the self she would be when she's not broken. And I think that mask that she's putting on with Adolin and she's mentioned a couple times, isn't her masking her true personality. Like you said, it, it's masking her depression, which is exactly well, trauma, what the issue is. Depression. Her trauma. Yeah. yeah. Which is the issue she has with Kaladin, right? Is that he can't see through that mask, even though it's this might there. be her genuine personality. Yeah. Yeah. I... What I really, oh, what I really like about, um, like Shalon throughout, especially at the beginning of Oathbringer, she is constantly just so worried that she's not good enough, that the real her is not like a a good fit for Adolin, that just like constantly like her, she has this like self, not self hatred, but like this self um, undermining, um. My my favorite thing is that every time she does something that she's like, oh no, have I ruined it? Have I done something too weird or too out there? Adolin loves it. He's mm-hmm. always like, wow, she is so cool. 
this is like <laughs> you know it's sort of like yeah. he never takes it like he never takes it the way she fears it's always just like i've learned something new about shallan she's amazing i like just like look at this new thing that i learned about her she just went out drinking wow how great is that <laughs> like it's sort of like it's sort of like he is he is the exact kind of personality and reaction to her um that like i hope that she can learn that she that she doesn't have to put on a face for him it's sort of like he's really interested in getting to know the real her and it's really important also every time he has seen bits of the real her he really has liked it you know mm-hmm. yeah i always thought with earthbringer uh, after words of radiance where she confronts this really bad stuff in her past she's just she's just kind of losing it with these personas and with Oathbringer, her arc is, yeah, let's, like, stop doing that, you know? Uh, and mm-hmm. she's not done. She's definitely not done with uh, dealing with these multiple personalities. She's, ultimately, she has to come to grips and actually face her trauma and deal with it and not shove it off into a persona. And mm-hmm. so I think we'll see that I- eventually, that she has to bring I- her personas back into her and actually face her trauma because that's, that's where her growth is, right? And and I think it's important to acknowledge that maybe when she did her third truth, she wasn't quite ready for it. Mm. Um, unlike the I killed my father and I'm terrified, the truth I killed my mother is A, she's been repressing it for a lot longer, like since she was a child, and B, it's the truth that broke her bond or damaged her bond with pattern. Mm-hmm. That's So yeah. it makes sense that there's this much bigger kickback when she admits that truth than we've seen in the past. Yeah. I, I feel like there's some people who are worried that, um, I, I think we said it before that, you know, the marriage was going to be the end game, not necessarily for the relationship uh, development, but for Shalon as well. I think there were some people who were, are worried that, oh, Shalon's mm-hmm. fixed now. It's better. She got her personas under control and, I I don't necessarily think that's the case. I don't think that the end of Oathbringer represents a conclusion to that part of Shallan's story. I think we've reached a point mm-hmm. where Shallan has maybe like bottomed out. She's not getting worse, but she still has a long way to go to be safe she's, and secure. She stopped happy. making the personas, but she still has the personas. Yes, uh, you know, right. I see a lot of people like very worried about that that's what this ending means but i've mm-hmm. I've never seen anyone actually say that's what it means yeah. everyone's just worried is this a hollywood hollywood ending but no, definitely just like, not. i don't think anyone only i've three. never i've never met anyone who actually thinks that's what's happening here just mm-hmm. i don't know there's absolutely no way this is this is the end because shallan maybe more than kaladin has a crap load of growth to do Yes. Calvin's yeah. issues seem like attackable in some way. Shallan's it's like, I don't know how you're you're gonna deal with that, <laughs> Shallan. Good luck with that. Roshar like, needs mm-hmm. needs a real a real therapist. She needs a, a real, real she, therapist. She, she a definitely. real psychiatrist. Um just like this is like okay. this is serious stuff. Like, you know, reintegrating like personas, like maybe maybe Brandon should think about like she's, professional. She's yeah, need like, she needs a world hopping magically aware uh therapist who can deal with her light weaving issues yeah. skadriel's yes. probably Half doing point. like d- psychology by now right you know can we grab I, one yeah, of them yeah they're getting Not up on quite. science it's like and... miss bornera too is getting, getting close like, <laughs> yeah. but like i'm really hoping like hoyd shows up again because like his scenes with like shallan were like among my favorite because like mm-hmm. he does like Agreed. P- can pretty much understand what she's going through. Like he can yeah. help. Like he can't fix her because like only she can fix her. But like mm-hmm. I I know there was a word of Brandon from the Oathbringer tour. It's like oh like what would Hoyt think of like where Shallan is at the end of Oathbringer? And it's like and his like opinion would be like she's like made progress, but like she still has a long way to go. Yeah. Mm-hmm. For sure. Yeah. Uh, do we need to talk about anything else with uh, Shalon and Adolin? I feel like we got 
like that's a lots of our pretty heels. good overview we got it yeah are we um, i think we got the meaty bits do we get to move on to the third side of the triangle well i'm like have we talked about like how like adolin like veil vale is like could be a, a drinking buddy and like radiant is like sword buddy do we want to talk about that or do we that, just that could be bad that oh. i feel like that like is like it would be fun for the meantime but i don't think it would be a good uh, i don't think it would be a good place for them to end up oh, like, yeah. I, like it, if it, like a veil and radiant are are going to be reintegrated to shallan mm-hmm. like you know like at some point i feel like adolin and shallan might learn that going out to drink going out drinking together would be fun like actually them and et cetera, et cetera. Like Shalon might be able to, you know, reintegrating Radiant, they could actually do sword things together. You know? Yeah. Um, well, I, well, I think the point was that like, um, Adolin is not attracted to Vale, like he is Shalon. It's just like, but mm-hmm. like, like, but like, I can go out to, for like drinks with her, like, but like, I can't have a relationship with her. So it's like I think that's like him rec- them recognizing like. Yeah, like they have like a workable solution right now, but like this can't be end game. Like, right? I agree with that. Yeah, I, it's that, like I think what we might end up seeing from those scenes is, you know, like Adolin and Vale are out drinking or you know training with uh, Radiant, and Adolin starts to bring Shallan back into those experiences. You know, I I almost wonder if that's the the way we're going to go, where you know. She's Vale drinking with Adolin, and then Adolin says something, and Shallan comes out again, and he's like, "Oh, or, Shallan's here." Cool. Yeah, mm-hmm. and yeah, Shallan comes out because she wants to be there for it, right? Yeah. That sort of thing. She doesn't want to give this to someone else anymore. She wants to. Yeah, I think that I'm, could be good. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah, and we, it's like yeah. it has to be like Shallan that makes that decision because, like, mm-hmm. like he doesn't want to like, like fix Shallan. It's like if Shallan wants to have be in that persona right now, like he'll deal with it like he might rather prefer to be like with shallan at that moment but like whatever like makes her comfortable in that moment like whoever she needs to be at that moment like he'll be there for her and if that means like being with veil instead of shallan there's like he'll deal yeah i feel like this is getting very close to like talking about how to treat something that we actually have no idea how it's actually treated. that's yeah, true that's um, very point. very true it's sort not of like mental it's we are not professional medical i don't know like that's the thing we don't know how closely brandon actually intends this to be to um like a, a dissociative disorder um because there is a supernatural element there is a supernatural it. element to it um it might be as it might be treated the same way depression is in our world or it might be something else because they're like I mean, but i guess yeah this is like veering into like i don't know if we're like we're we know we don't we we don't know how to treat this yeah um Mm -hmm. we don't so it might be a good time to uh move on to the next side yeah yeah we're going we're going long my favorite my favorite part of this you should definitely take this one shannon okay yeah calden and adolin like let me let me just just start this off that this is my favorite my favorite relationship and probably the entire series so far the really fun part about it is that i don't have to justify like whether it'll become canon or not like brandon is never gonna go here we've we're, like we've all made our peace with that but this is just a really fun relationship and i i really love shipping it yes. um <laughs> Ka- kaladin Same. and adolin i loved everything about how they began they began as like definitely not friends they they did not get along Adolin was light eyes and Kaladin was mad at him and it was just a, a messy start but then slowly over the course of these these books they started to really really connect and it just ha- surprises me every time that Adolin like right being now, in jail with Kaladin <laughs> that was that's, the best that oh, yeah. was that's right or die man that's <laughs> Adolin was there for Kaladin like yeah, when yeah. Kaladin did not expect to get any sort of uh like payback or response for like the the, the great thing that he did for Adolin. He saved Adolin's life. And Adolin and he got knows thrown it. in jail for it. Um Or yeah, like but... when Kaladin like gives the shard plate and blade to Moash, like Adolin's right. like, what are you doing? And and then the Kaladin explains himself and like Adolin is like, okay. 
it's like it's your decision like he doesn't mm -hmm. try like oh no this is for you blah 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 he accepts like kaladin's like i don't want shard blade or plate and accept you know and like I my mean, favorite part about that is that like that part especially happens like kaladin jumps in the ring to save edelin and then edelin from that moment he's like kaladin's a good egg at that point he still hasn't found out what kaladin's big secret is he's still he's still sitting on that but he realizes you know what the secret that he this big secret it can't be bad kaladin's great right from there oh <laughs> yeah i i Edelin, that, good judge of character yeah he's, he's a great judge of character um i the the shard blade scene in particular i remember really freaking out when that started happening because i was like this is a psychological trigger for kaladin someone offering him a shard blade after he <laughs> heroically saves someone's life and he's in a room full of his men that he loves like there's n no wonder kaladin freaked out because he thought like just that that trigger maybe it didn't make logical sense but triggers don't it was that idea of like it's gonna happen again i'm gonna turn down the shard blade and adolin's gonna kill everyone or something like it but adolin was fine with it you know, nothing nothing bad happened and Kaladin was able to not take the shard blade and it was okay. And I just uh it was it was just it was a very tense scene and just a very good one for that reason too. And quote from Kaladin's perspective, when I was imprisoned for daring to accuse Amaram, he was the only light eyes who stood up for me. Adolin Colin mm -hmm. was simply a good person, et cetera, et cetera. How about his clothes? Because you can't you always have to make one of his clothes. You couldn't <laughs> I mean. hate a man like him, Storms. You kind of had to like him. You do, though. Would... You do. He's um, great. And it is interesting, though, like that kind of, oh, man, you have to like him is similar to, like, Shalon's thoughts about both Kaladin and Adeline. Like, the how that Adeline. sentence and section is. Jesus. Adeline is <laughs> Jesus. structured. I... I haven't I, done I podcasts think... not as much, though. So. It's been a while. Um, I, we haven't I, argued one of the about things pronunciation that... on this podcast never, yet, anyway. Uh, never, <laughs> never, <laughs> never done that. <laughs> um, one of the things that I, you know, another reason I didn't, I pushed back against the idea of Shalon and Kaladin, I was like, uh, Kaladin and Adolin have been, uh, like Grey, one of my favorite relationships in Words of Radiance. Like, I loved every scene that they were in. I loved their budding friendship. And I was like, Brandon Sanderson, do not put a girl between them and turn them back into rivals. You, you, you stop. Don't do it. That would and be really Ophelia awful. Totally. It would have been so bad and it totally didn't happen. And I love how supportive and loving Kaladin and Adolin are all throughout Oathbringer. I mean, I know. Kaladin's it like, was such a my new light-eyed friends can't be mean to Adolin if they only talk to him. They would see For how five great minutes, he was. <laughs> if they would merely <laughs> spend five minutes talking to him, they'd see he wasn't so bad. Like, at the same time, they were mocking Adolin. It's such a change from where Kaladin and Adolin started. Like, yeah. at the beginning, yes. can you imagine Kaladin defending Adolin? He was like, it was the opposite. He was like, Dalinar is the only one I trust, and even then, it's like very thin. And Adolin's just a, you know, like screw him. He's he's not spoiled he's not worth fop, it. Sorta, yeah. He's a yeah, spoiled right. fop, and he doesn't deserve that. Whatever. I guess he's sort of talented, but like, rah, 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 rah. he was just grumpy. And now to get to this and, point, like Adolin uh -huh. is so good natured. He he did kind of like he refused to let Ka Kaladin rile him up. He was just like, yep. Like, you know, just, like, he he made a focused effort to just be really, like, funny and kind to Kaladin. And Kaladin was, like, over time, like, a book later is, like, yeah, Adolin's pretty great. Like, there's also, like, the fact that um, when they end up in Shadesmar, it's, like, Kaladin mm -hmm. starts going to a very dark place. And like, Adolin's he, he, there. Like, mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. Adolin is there for him. And he does the right thing to help him too, mm -hmm. yeah, like, like keeping he him knows talking. We have to leave stuff. him alone, but also keep him doing other things, kind of thing. So I think we there's can a, all there's agree. There's definitely a, a mention. Mm -hmm. I I think we can all agree that uh, if the love triangle turned out to be, oh, I hate you, Aelin, I hate you, Calden, that would be awful. And so we're all very <sighs> happy worst. that that did not happen. Yeah, yes. I think we should trust Brandon that if he's going to do a love triangle, he's going to avoid those things, and he, Thank he proved goodness. this right. 
and yeah and um i um i I was just gonna say the the kind of counterpoint to kaladin's like oh adolin's so great you know adolin has the same moment about kaladin actually when he sees shallan like looking at kaladin with admiration he's like i can't I can't even be mad at her. Like it's Kaladin. Who d- who doesn't? Who isn't a little bit in love with Kaladin? Everybody's a little bit in love with Kaladin. <laughs> I right? feel like I feel like this is like something Brandon falls into by accident. Like kind of yes. in the same way that it's Shallan's the same thing description, with Shallan and, yeah. and Yasna. Uh, Yasna. Mm-hmm. Like just because like it's assumed that like no no interest here. Like it's sort of like it opens him up to like when like, just gushing with admiration. So it's sort of like. In in Oathbringer, whenever Adolin describes Kaladin and how he looks and what he's doing, it's like it comes off like Kaladin is the coolest and he looks amazing. And look at his like when the wind blowing and just wow, what a what a night radiant. He's amazing. What a badass. What what a bad. I yeah. just you know and like that's how Kaladin's entire like uh, POV comes off when like when aimed at Kaladin. He's just like he's the coolest person ever. And it's, it's, it made my entire day, like, this is not where they started. And I can't believe this mm-hmm. is what we got in book three. Yeah. And I think that's a really important thing to raise when you're looking at, especially non-canon queer relationships, is even in the real world, lots of times queer, yeah, um, queer relationships are, you're dealing with subtext because they're not readily visible. And so I think that's why a lot of times, a lot of times fans um, will start picking out these little things and then creating these relationships in in the fanon. Um, it's because we're kind of trained that when we're looking for same sex relationships, we're looking for subtext rather than mm-hmm. uh, explicit text. That so. is true. Yeah. yeah. It's uh, because we yeah, know I it's feel not like going to happen. Necessarily yeah, like, we don't have to go necessarily into the, oh, here are the negatives of, of Catalan quite as much, because no. you know what, it's, Brandon's not at a point where he's ready to write a major, major character um, relationship that way. I know it's just something he doesn't feel comfortable uh, tackling at the moment. He doesn't think he's the best person for it. And I love that we're seeing more um, uh, same gender relationships, like with Drake and um, Drew. Um, yep. And but for something like Catalan, it's it's always going to be the realm of Fanon, but that doesn't mean that there's not a lot there that you can dig into. Mm-hmm. They have, and they make a good bromance. They too. they're an amazing bromance. That's true. E- even though yeah, even like, if you don't want to read the romantic side into it, the bromance works great as well. It's amazing, and they should. Adolin should reawaken his blade. Then they can be <laughs> radiance together and be fighting. <laughs> On the field, <laughs> being badasses together. That With sounds amazing. Honor spread in cultivation spread. Like, oh! come on. Yeah, it's good stuff. Good stuff. OTP. OTP. Like the real, the real Mirt. Yes. Yeah. It's, uh, I've been on this ship since, since right after Way of Kings, I re- after I finished reading it the first time. And I just had like great experiences because every book, they just, their, their relationship has actually grown. I wondered at the end of the first book like is this actually maybe they're just going to meet each other and hate each other and nothing will ever come of it but actually it's i'm surprised at how much attention that their relationship has actually got in the books and i am so pleased mm-hmm. yeah it's great any last thoughts um, guys i think we're we're about done we, we're we have over gone time. so over long time. yeah <laughs> yeah and any last thoughts before we go i don't, I don't think so good All talk right. love triangles are fun and, and they're done well, yeah. Even when they're frustrated. We're definitely gonna <laughs> have, yeah, we should have podcast on uh, the other love triangle Brandon wrote, which uh, we have, some of us have issues with uh, Well of Ascension. <laughs> uh, we'll, we'll get to that eventually. Yeah. But uh, right. we'll have more character discussion, uh, not just all theories all the time. So I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, we await your long essays telling us how we're wrong. Uh, uh, on the forums. So please feel free to do that. I guess it's gonna make be great. Sure, I love essays. Make sure though you like and subscribe to this video, <laughs> <laughs> and follow us on uh Facebook, Twitter, and SoundCloud, and uh of course join in in the fun on the forums and Discord. Uh, tons of tons of activity. You'll you will not you will be entertained.
I guarantee it. All right. Bye. 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 Call.